hills come out from everywhere. You know, when I got out of high school, I was looking for a job, a steady job. I had to get some benefits and be, you know, an adult, go to work. Well, you know, I worked in a parts store and I had pretty good luck with that. So I said, hey, why not uh, apply for a parts position somewhere? Well, our local Nissan dealership, they called me back and I'll never forget it. The store manager calls me up and he says, I got good news and bad news. He said, good news is you're hired. I said, great. What's the bad news? He said, you're also fired. We got bought out today. But he said, I'm pretty sure that you will have a job with our new owner. They just bought their Nissan franchise. They didn't use their building, the property or anything. He said, basically gave me an address, which was a Hilton Hotel in downtown. He said, meet these guys at this time. Well, I walk into the Hilton and there's some guys there in bright blue golf shirts and their perfectly starched khaki pants working for a major automotive retailer, CarMax, the auto superstore. And they told me all about CarMax Way. CarMax hadn't made its way into South Carolina yet. I, it was news to me. He said, Rob, we need you to go to room 312. I'm like, okay. I'm like, I mean, it's just so weird. I mean, I'm a 19 year old kid. I'm real green at this stuff. I mean, I'm just like, okay, you know, kind of feeling it out. I mean, I'm about to get molested or something. This is crazy, you know? And the weirdest thing about this hotel room is all the furniture was gone out of it. And they gave me a drug test on the spot, which that was never a problem. So I took my drug test and I asked him, I said, it's none of my business, but why is there no furniture in this hotel room? And he said, well, we didn't want it to be intimidating when you walked in. And I'm like, you don't know, understand if you're, you know, interviewing a little girl or something, you know, or a young woman or something like that, but okay, you know, whatever. So they flew me to Dulles, Maryland to show me the CarMax way. And they asked me a lot of questions about my background and I told them, you know, in sales and, Told them, you know, clean up. And I said, I'm pretty good with numbers, pretty good with parts, pretty good mechanical knowledge, really good with body work. Um, told them a few little stories about that. They laughed. And I said, you know what? I might even be good at sales. You never know. And they said, we really don't think you'd be good for sales at CarMax. And which everybody knows after dealing with them, I see why they say that because CarMax don't have salespeople. They have test drive monitors. But they stuck me in the parts department in Dulles, Maryland. I'd never been out of town before. First time I was on an airplane in my life. We get there and you know, they gave me a car to drive. And I mean, Dallas, Maryland, I don't know if you've ever been there or not, but it's cold and I'll just say that, it's cold and rough, very rough. Huge dealership, thousand used cars on the lot, six new car franchises in that one spot. And then I came back to Greenville and the store was almost done. We we're fixing to have our grand open. We opened February 14th on Valentine's Day was our opening day. I'll never forget, they gave me a car to drive and they said, we need you to go to the airport. We had Sterling Marlin there for our grand opening. I hope there's no NASCAR fans on here. So I picked this prick up and the first thing he says, get out of the car, I drive everywhere. I'm like, whatever, you know, I like drag racing better anyway, you know, I care less. So we drive back and we do our grand opening thing. And they bought some nice cars, you know, some really late model cars, which CarMax, that's their big thing. Low miles, late model, that's what they look for. And they usually miss everything else in between. They brought in a red Dodge Dakota truck and the buyers were talking about it. He said, the Dodge dealership here doesn't even have one on the front line. And we have one on our opening day on our used car lot. And I said, yeah, it's a good looking truck. But I said, you can tell the bed's been painted on it. They said, no, Rob, that truck only has 6,000 miles on it. He said, it could have been a repossession or something like that, but he said, I'm, that truck's never had paintwork done on it. And I said, whatever, you know, I'm not gonna argue with you about it. And I mean, I spotted that from 30 feet away. They sold the truck the very first day. Next day, come back into work. I seen that little red Dakota coming right back in again one day. I mean, the next day is coming back. I'm like, that's crazy. Pull in the service department. Technician throws RO on the counter and starts laughing. It says, look under bed liner. They pull the bed liner back on it. It's got a blue bed inside. These cars are not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. I said, you got a front fender with orange peel, you got a door with orange peel, and you got a bedside that's slick as glass that's been cut and buffed. I said, it's a dead giveaway that something's been done downside of this truck. And I said, I'm not saying it was a bad fix. I mean, somebody put a bed on it. It's probably a great truck, but it has been painted on. He said, you reckon you could help our buyers out a little bit? We got a project. He said, they need a little training. He said, they meet the criteria as far as the cars they're finding, but they may need a little help looking for potential body damage and things of that nature. 
They came in with a Firehawk Trans Am. Black, good looking Trans Am. He said, now that's a good looking car. He said, this car will do great in this market. And they were just bragging it up. I said, it's a good looking car, but I said, you can tell the entire driver's side has been painted on this car. And he said, Rob, there's no orange pill on it. I said, but look down the other side and across the hood, catching the right light. You see those little dimples, that's orange pill. He said, nope, nope, you got it wrong. I'm not gonna argue with this man, I'm fine. I went back going to the parts counter, hanging out. They put it up on the lift, changed oil in it, did a little CQI inspections on it. Pulled up on the lift, masking tape across the bottom of it, black paint across the bottom of the, bottom of the rocker panel on it. Another car goes to wholesale because we didn't sell wreck cars. And they stood behind that. They wouldn't sell them. They would wholesale them off. We had a competitor, and I'm not going to call it out, but I was sent on a mission to go on their car lot and find all the wrecked cars or painted cars. And their buyer had already been over there one time earlier in the week, and he said he found only one car on the lot that he thought had it. He already told me where it was at, what it looked like, even the stock number of this car, so I could go right to it. And that car did have a little paintwork on it. He lucked up and hit one that did. I found about 12 that did, including one with clamp marks from a frame machine. And they really liked that. So I told them the price. We looked the car up online. They gave me cash and I went and bought this car and brought it back. And we found a card for a body shop in it. We've got pictures of this car in the body shop on a frame machine that this guy took and now they're selling this car that's never been wrecked or in trouble and with a clean Carfax report. You know, the thing you understand about a Carfax report too, unless insurance pays off on it, it doesn't get listed. If that car's paid for, it will never be known. And we put it in the showroom at CarMax with all their tags and their stickers and their window stickers still in it. And with little notes, I actually wrote the notes that were printed out and little signs by the car potential frame damage, clamp marks, and pictures of this car in the body shop. CarMax was the weirdest company ever. They took auto restoration to the next level. They would take off a set of Michelins that were knee deep, 10,000 miles, to put a set of no-name new tires on. Well, what do we do with all these used tires? And they come to me about it. I stocked every used tire shop in West Greenville. To this day, if I need a tire I don't pay for anything in West Greenville. I'm the king of used tires in West Greenville. I stock these tire shops up. Keep in mind, I mean, we're selling five, 600 units a month out of the store. They just want somebody to take them. And I'm like, I'm calling these used tire stores up. I said, you wanna get some tires? How much are they? I said, they're free, they're free. And they see these tires. And I mean, like maybe one in 10 would not be usable. So they love this. Aftermarket accessories. Anything with a speaker box, anything in the trunk, a trailer hitch. They took them off and they were throwing them in the dumpsters. We had the garbage man climbing in the dumpster, digging out trailer hitches. He had a side hustle online. But we bought some Explorers that were conversions. They had a high top on them like a van. They were crazy looking, had every tacky stick on accessory on them, just cheesy running boards, the whole shoot match. We sold it and it came back. A few days later, it's a waiter. There's a noise in the dash. Technician comes in. First thing he does, drop the glove box down because he could hear it when he turned the heat on, the blower motor on. He drops the glove box down. A little baggie of pills falls out. Hits the dash. More pills fall out. He pulls the glove box inside out. Pulls back the heater box. Pills come out from everywhere little baggies with about two to three pills in each one, different colors. We pulled the door panels off of it, full of pills. We pulled the back quarter panels off of it, inside, interior quarter panels, full of pills. This person is sitting in the service, service waiting room and we're pulling shovel loads of pills out of this damn Explorer. I call the police. So a Greenville County SWAT car drives by, they see it pull in, drive in around. We filled up a 30 gallon trash bag with mystery pills. And I'm pretty sure it's not Tylenol cold and flu, but I'm pretty sure somebody lost their damn life because of this car getting lost. We had a drug dog go through it, put all the panels back on it, 
cleaned it up in the detail shop while they waited and they pulled it around. They said, guess what, your blower motor, the fan was a little loose, got you all ready to go. And they never knew it. And the cops were still there when they left. That's what makes it so much fun. And it was just another day at the max.